random art tips and rambles with Rafi. Hola, you amazing artist. It's Rafi. And Klee. And today we are going to talk about using social media as an artist. Um, in, in my own two cents is like, how do you use social media and not have social media use you? Because, uh, yeah, a lot of the questions that we get when it comes to social media or a lot of the comments that we get is that some people run into burnout pretty quickly on yeah. social media. I hear the words exhausting, time consuming, emotionally draining, scary used a lot. Yep. And as you guys know, we have our amazing rogue artist community here with us. Um, so if you hear us reading any comments or um, just, you know, that we're not talking to ourselves, we are talking to them. And they Indeed. are giving us their brilliant <laughs> insight uh, as artists from all over the place uh, who probably use social media. Some of them say that they are lurkers. Uh huh. Which... I think we all we all know what lurking on social media looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Timothy. Hey, Shroy. Hey, Tish. Hey, Linda. I think I already said hi to you guys. Either way, hello and welcome. So let's get this party started. All right. And uh, rogues, feel free to chime in with your uh, social media struggles, questions, best practices life hacks yeah all of that all all of the all of the stuff because really when it comes to social media i think one of the things that really complicates it is that there is a lot of information out there you know tips and tricks on how to use social media and get the most um out of the algorithm or whatever yeah, crap it is and there's most of those make me feel slightly nauseous it, it really does you know and and there's a lot of um stuff out there that is just kind of based on using social media as a platform to become famous, right? So a lot of those things are like how to use, how to become Insta famous in blah, 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 or, you know, how to, how to break the algorithm and all that stuff. And really at the end of the day, that stuff gets exhausting. That really is to me, the thing that gets exhausting is like, if you're using social media, which is the irony, right? Cause like, as an artist, you want to be able to show off your stuff because you want to make, you know, you want to sell some of your art, right? And that's where things get a little bit confusing because you want to post your stuff in order to sell your art, but you're not getting as much traction on social media because essentially you are using it more as an advertising platform than you are as social social media right you know like and unfortunately some of the platforms themselves that's what they want they want you to pay for promoting yourself they want you to give them money to promote the stuff that you're doing now i because we started you know a lot of things like facebook back in 2009 and and a lot of the the stuff we didn't know what we were doing. Mm -mm. So to me, I think from the very beginning, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to use this as a, a, I started watching like videos and reading blogs on like what you should do with social media first getting started. And all that stuff just started, sounded overwhelming to me because like, you know, I was spending the majority of my time creating art. I didn't want to sit there and write out like, you know, um, and it, a thing that was going to go viral for social media or even for YouTube. Like a lot of the advice on YouTube is basically treats it the same way where it's like, you're just promoting yourself and how to get the most views and most subscribers and most all this stuff. And really um, I was able to take the pressure off by just making it about keeping a journal, right? Right. For myself almost like a public journal, right? Like, so this is the cool thing I did today. This is the cool thing, you know, whatever. And being able to go back and, and look at this very easy grid, uh, you know, like on Instagram where I could go back and I just see these pictures that represent what was happening on that day or that time of the month or whatever it was. Diane so. said, I'm, uh, yes, all of those words describe my own relationship with social media. I'm trying to work on being very targeted. I'm learning to find only those groups and pages that most align with me, trying to zero in on focusing on what inspires me. 
Yeah. Gobbles Gossip says, yeah, I'm all over the place. And Rachel said, doom scrolling. Doom scrolling. Yeah, doom scrolling. So I typically do not go on social media and just look at the timeline, right? I'm very specific. When I do go on social media, it's because I am looking at maybe something that the rogues have posted. You know, our community tends to be um, very positive. Right. It's true. Yeah. And, you know, there's there's that's one thing that social media has become synonymous with is that it's become a all social media, like including the comment section in YouTube and some of the videos. But it's become synonymous with like the um, faceless troll just trolling and doing whatever they can to just cause. Um, mayhem mayhem because you know mayhem is popular <laughs> unfortunately mayhem gets clicks. it gets a lot of it gets a lot of clicks and it gets a lot of attention because if it angers you you're gonna want you're gonna feel compelled to respond right so then there's more interaction if you agree with it you know and it angers someone else you're gonna feel compelled to respond and agree with it so like it really it it it, it goes into the psychological dimensions of the human mind of like grouping themselves into groups. And a lot of people know that that's going to make them popular very quickly. The only problem is that it's not sustainable. Right. I mean, I, you, you can't go on there and just hate on everything all the time for the rest of time. Like it's going to get exhausting. Definitely. Um, and you know, and, and really when you stop and you think about it is like, is this the thing that I want to be remembered for? Is this the thing that I want to have out there? I would say the answer is no for most of us here, at least yeah. on this podcast. TGP art says lurking all over the place. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Clover said, expect slow, but quality followers. You aren't appealing to the masses and you have to use it as a social media and be social, i.e. interact comment etc because just like live shows it's not about your exactly, art exactly clover exactly it's not about your art it's about your interaction you know the art is the colorful thing everybody knows in marketing um especially if you have my marketing book there's my shameless plug in plug in <laughs> my shameless plug um everyone knows that bright colors some are attention grabbers, right? There are certain things that are going to grab your attention. As artists, it's great because, you know, we we create colorful things and that's going to grab your attention. But it's the relationship that you're able to form with that person. It's kind of like uh, if you've ever been on a bus or like in a room somewhere and something about someone just kind of stands out to you and you're thinking to yourself like, oh man, that person seems really interesting. I'd like to know more or chat more with them and depending on your levels of extrovert and introvert at that moment in time you may go and have a conversation with them and find that like wow you know we've got a lot in common and that's great and a friendship forms from that it's the same thing when you're showing your art you know it's like mm -hmm. there's something about the art that is going to appeal to people that are your people and but it but really it's the relationship that that ultimately matters there I, I don't know how many times i've gone on social media and i'll see a post where it's like uh created this this morning dm me for more information and i'm like what would you go to a party and like somebody comes up to you is like hey you know i know that you're into well why don't you dm me for more information <laughs> Yeah, it you know? doesn't really work that way. Tish said, by the time I started to understand the social media algos, that's when they would change things up. So I left most socials and focused on YouTube. Yeah, social media. And that's the thing, Tish, is like a lot of people are pushing the algorithms on social media, right? They're like, this is the secret to blah, blah, blah. And you, you could trick the algorithm and you could do this. In fact, I got a message um, from one of uh, one of our followers, and it was like, right now, if you do shorts this way, it tricks the algorithm into whatever, blah, blah. And my response, I think, was along the lines of like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that. That's too much work. And they laughed, and they're like, well, I'll let you know how it goes. And I'm like, that's 
too much. It's constantly changing. There's constantly stuff. There's constantly new information out there. And I'm like, you're going to get pulled into all these different directions of how you should use social media in order to make it work and be popular and all that stuff. And I'm like, that's just too much. Like, I want to focus on my art and I'm going to use social media because it would be dumb not to use social media because it's an opportunity that exists now that back when when I was wanting to be an artist, you know, back in before social media and all that stuff came into the landscape, like that was something that I wished would happen. I remember my first attempt wanting to, uh, oh, I'm going to do this art thing. And the first thing I did was create a website, right? And there's no way to get anybody to my website. It was like back in the in 98 or something like that. It was like you create a website and there it and is. And there it is. Wow, I have a created a creative works by Rafi, I think it was called. And you know, I had all this cool stuff and all my artwork on the website and really the only way that I was able to communicate to people that I had a website was with a business card or letting them know that that's where it was. That was it. There wasn't any real way to share what I do on other platforms. And so like when I look at all these platforms, I'm like, these are just other ways that you could reach out to people that are already on a platform and give them the opportunity to discover you, to discover you. Right. It's, it's the same thing as doing a market, right? I could either do a farmer's market, right. To show my art or not do the market. If I do the market, I am giving people the opportunity. Everybody that attends the market for whatever reason that they attend the market, I give them the opportunity to see my stuff. Some of them will. Some of them will walk by the booth really quickly and not notice it. Some of them will glance in and not be interested in anything that's in there. Some of them may glance in and just, you know, they're there for other stuff and they may come in and look at the work and have a conversation with me and not buy anything. That's great. That's interaction number one right? That interaction would not have happened if I did not go and do the market exactly the same way as it works on social media. It wouldn't happen. The opportunity to find this person won't happen if I just completely avoid it, right? What happens is that everybody hears and sees all these things, you know, in in the beginning, people were buying likes and buying followers and buying subscribers. They did the same thing on YouTube, right? Yeah. And you go to their page and they have 100,000 followers, but they're not getting that much in They get maybe like 20 responses uh, or likes on their post. And every time I see that, I don't look at that main number. I'm like, they've got, they've got nothing. There's nothing there. There's no community. There's no, they haven't formed anything. And so that's buying into that whole idea that it's like more followers, more likes, more this equals more money. Right. Right. And at the end of the day, that's the problem with social media is that everybody's using it as an opportunity to make more money. So when you're not making money with it, you get discouraged and immediately you walk away. However, if you use it the way that I do, which is like, this is just a record for me. Right. And I happen to share it out there with people. Um, if they find it cool, if they don't, they don't, if they like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't, if they're interested in following it, cool. If not, so what? I'm going to do this stuff anyway. Kind of like how social media was before anyone figured out that you could advertise on it, which did happen very quickly. That was a very short period of time, like the advent of social media. And then, oh, And that's, that's the problem is that all these platforms, you know, they're going to, they're going to figure out how to make money and then they're going to figure out how to make more money. And then they're going to figure out, you know, like right now, Facebook is making not only money off of the main advertisers that they, that they have, but they're also making money off of the people that are posting on there um, because they're advertising and, you know, the whole algorithm and this and that and blank, blank, blank and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's become that part of that business for them. So, of course, that's what they push. And we got to remember that it those are people, right? They're not numbers. They're not wallets with legs. Those are other people that are using the platform. And they may be using the platform to advertise, but they're going to run into things that they agree with, disagree with, that they like, that they don't like. And just because there are large numbers of people on there 
doesn't mean that the response is going to be large. It's still going to be one person at a time. Yeah, just like Clover said. Diane said, you can't trick the algorithm. I fully agree. (laughs) It changes daily, and if you don't pay, you'll not be seen regularly, but you can share and engage with your peeps. Yeah. I feel for those... Follow for follow. I feel those follow for follow schemes early on, and now my following follower ratios. <laughs> oh, fell for yeah. the follow for follow schemes. Now my ratios are all a mess. And I, th- I think that ratios are one of those other things that, like, we were told to care, right? That you should be following less people than follows you. We were told yeah. to care about that. And I honestly there's don't so think many, it's super. There's so many stupid things. And, and like, really, at the end of the day, you got to think of, like, what's the motivation there? Right. right? It's the so motivation you... is pay attention to me, guys. Please, please pay attention to me so that I can make this thing work. And it's like, don't. It, it's not about that. It's about your people finding you. You don't want, kind of like Clover said, it's not about the masses, Sure, there's a lot of people on there, but just because there's more doesn't mean it's better. Like, I think about that with our YouTube channel. We have people subscribe all the time because maybe they run into one video and they think that that video, that's that's the that's our content. And then they watch another video and another video and another video, or they watch one other video or they run into another one and they don't like it, right? And they unsubscribe. To me, I'm like, that's great because that's like, you know, it works. W- w- yeah, it's like you're weeding the garden. Mm-hmm. You want people to find your stuff, and the ones that are actually interested are the ones that stay, and the ones that aren't, oh well, you know. Tish said, when social media became torture for my mental health, I left. I'm in a better brain space now, so I'm tiptoeing back into it. It's weird for me as I usually run into a room yelling, plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> so. When when MySpace first became a thing, I was like in my very early 20s and I was like, I don't really understand this, you know, because I'm one of those kids that grew up without social media. I got a profile. Actually, a friend created a profile for me. I didn't know what to do with it, but I thought it was amusing to put my face and some banners and some pictures and music on a page on the Internet. And I would post like random thoughts for the day maybe questions I was pondering. Maybe if my band was playing a show, I would post something about that. Nobody was following me, so it didn't really matter. But I think fondly back on that time, I think, because it was a time before there were, like, social media um, rules of engagement. You mean the social media gurus? Yeah. Yeah. It was a time before advertising, a time for like the how to's, uh, uh, before the how to's, and like this is what you do with social media and this is what you don't do. And it was very like, I, I'm reluctant to use the word pure <laughs> because I don't know that it's super applicable, but it was still in its like very organic form, I guess. Um, and it's, it's this weird conundrum because I feel like we pretty much as a whole can all agree that like advertising is the thing that's annoying about social media. And that's, yeah, because that's the thing that you're, you're hearkening back to this time when things were so much better and, and really it's just. And none of us knew what we were doing, so we just did whatever we wanted. And I feel like you can still do that. Like, we all agree that advertising is the annoying part, and yet we all feel like in some way, shape, or form we need to fit into that until we realize that we don't. Right, and usually it comes down, and the motivations are always there, right? There, There's always deeper motivations. I like uh, Gobbles Gops says, I agree with the journal thing feeling a lot more natural and comfortable for me. Mm-hmm. And that's really that's really at the core of that because – you're getting rid of all the advertising marketing lingo and understanding what marketing actually is. Marketing is just announcing to the world that you do this thing, putting it out there so that people, giving people the opportunity to find you, right? If I advertise that I can fix your sink, right, in 20 seconds, and, and I'm putting that out there, only people that are interested in getting their sink fixed in 20 seconds out of the masses are the ones that are going to be interested. And if they run into my content and they are in need of that service or in need of that, then they are going to, you know, 
seek you out seek me out but until then like that that's irrelevant and for a lot of people it's understanding that when it comes to art especially for artists it's understanding that when it comes to art there is a relative frame of mind that someone has to be in in order for something to really stand out to them. And it's not every single work of art. It is something that is specific to them in that moment of time of what they need. Art is healing. Art is something that causes you to think and change your mind and and do these amazing things. Art is powerful. But if somebody is just thinking about, well, I got to get from point A to point B and do this and do that, the art has to be relevant to something that's going on in their life in that moment for them to stop and look at it, right? It doesn't mean that it's not any good. It's attaching it to all this stuff, right? If I don't make any money with my art, it means I'm not any good. If nobody likes my stuff, it means that I'm not any good. If nobody pays attention to me, it means that I'm not any good, that I'm not worth it, that I'm not this, that I'm not that. And so like social media went from being this, like you said, pure thing of like you just us just doing what we're doing to becoming this thing of like people need to notice me and i need to do whatever it takes to get noticed and so you miss the point and you turn it into a job and you turn it into this thing that honestly sucks and is frustrating it's full of pressure it's full of pressure and and you're constantly measuring oh well this this works and this doesn't work and this doesn't work and and that's the thing it's like there is no correct way to use social media. You just have to figure out how do I use it where I could look back at years and years of stuff and be like, I am an effing badass. And it has nothing to do with how many people are following. I don't even look at the likes on my post. I just look, I look back and I'm like, look at us. Remember this? Remember when we did this? We're yeah. such badasses. Like, that's it. A number of years ago, Rafi made the decision that we both did that regardless of the rules laid out before us by the social media gurus, that we were going to use social media as a whole person, not a highlight reel. And what that means is, no, regardless if they say that your art platform should be just about your art and nothing else. Um, which is why a lot of us have an art page and a personal page on a lot of platforms that you can post about your art, you can post about your personal life. doesn't have to be super personal, but just other things outside of your studio. You can post about questions you're thinking about. You can post about whatever you want to because you're a whole person. You're not just... A thing that produces art. Can you imagine if our, um, like, videos... You know, I think about the videos that where we started when we were on the road. And that statement right there makes sense of it. Because back then, it was like, we weren't whole people, right? It was like, there was all this pressure. Well, you know, other people are becoming famous on YouTube, right? YouTube was a new thing. And, Mm -hmm. like, people were doing well. And you're able to make money on YouTube. And we're on the road. We should make money on YouTube. And really, that's where a lot of the focus was with just a tiny little bit of focus on, like, let's let's be us and do our thing. Right. Right? So because there was a tiny little bit of focus here, mostly, like, over here, it was these travel videos of us, like, Either A, me with sunglasses on being like, hey guys, right now we're in the Everglades. (sighs) You know, like, just dumb, trying to act cool. Or it was an overly obnoxious, like, hey you guys, today we're in blah, 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 blah. Because that's what was on YouTube. And that's what a lot of the, the gurus on YouTube were recommending back then. And so, like, instead of doing our own thing like we do now... It was following what works, right? That, and that you hear that all the time. You want to follow what works so that you can blah, blah, blah. And really, I would say follow what works for you that you're comfortable with, that you enjoy doing, right? Don't don't give a rat's ass about whether or not people are following you or whatever. Just is this enjoyable enough where I can make this consistent? That's it. Because really... The secret, right, to, to to doing this as a career is just putting your stuff out there 
and putting it out there a lot. For a long time. For a long time. So much so that like people can't ignore you. I'm going to do this so much that people are not going to be able to ignore me. Right? I, I did a video not too long ago about Instagram. It took four years before like I had more than four likes mm -hmm. on, on each post. I didn't care. I wasn't checking it. I, I trained myself to just not even look at that, to just look at the post. And I think that that's what matters because you want to be you. You want to be you when you put yourself out there. Yeah, and your whole self. I fell into the trap because I bought into this idea that, like, if you have an art page, you should only post your art. And I fell into this horrible loop of, like, only posting on Saturday when I was at a show or market. Like, I'm at the blah, 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 at the blah, 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 next week at the blah, 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 creating for the blah, 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 at the blah, blah, blah. And honestly, I grew bored with it like immediately. And I did, I did that. I had a separate page for my jewelry. I had a separate page for the music stuff that I wasn't doing. So it was just sitting dormant. I had a personal thing that I posted nothing to. And I was just trying to post this art content. And I realized like that might work for some, but for me, like that does not work. And I gave up on that and started posting whatever I'm doing on the th on all the th the things yeah. consolidating i'm a whole person i do more than just go to shows yeah <laughs> <laughs> so and honestly i think you're hearing less and l i don't know if you're hearing less and less of that advice these no, days no it's out there uh, in doing research for this i was like i i started i just ran into all the blogs and stuff and that's the problem is that all that stuff is regurgitated bull crap from somewhere else regurgitated bullcrap if you know anything about content writing basically w when content writers what they get paid for is to find information on the internet rewrite it to sound like they did it and then post it and you see the same shit happening on youtube all the time and it's just regurgitating this because this person says that it works and so now i'm gonna get more people to follow me because now i'm saying that it works as well mm -hmm. and it must be correct because a bunch of other people are saying that it works and the reason that a bunch of other people are saying that it works is because everybody's regurgitating the same bullshit so it, it's it's there's a lot of it out there. It's a big, uh, messy echo chamber, is what you're saying. Gobbles Gossip said, I fell in love with you guys right away. Oh, thank you, oh, Gobbles. thank you. Tish is like, oh, I'm G, MySpace. I feel in my old. my 30s. <laughs> Diane's like, I skipped over MySpace and reluctantly joined Facebook. I've reluctantly joined all the major ones, and now I want to run for the hills. Yeah, you got to make it, you got to make it about you and what it is that you want to do on there. And, you know, honestly... The thing is that I'm like, use it, right? Use it because it's there. It's an opportunity that didn't exist before to share your stuff. But also just use it how you want to use it. But also if you don't want to use it, then don't use it. I, you came, know? I came to such a stupidly simple conclusion recently that it kind of floored me. And I say stupidly simple because it's something that we all know. But it's like unless you hear yourself say it. It eludes you sometimes. You know who's not stressed out by social media? People that aren't trying to sell stuff on social media. And they're the ones that are having a nice meal <laughs> or, or visiting somewhere or just keeping up with their family and friends. Now, I'm not saying that social media is not stressful for any of those people because it can be stressful for a plethora of different reasons. But I think the people that aren't buying into this lie that you need to like do this and do that and blah, blah, blah to get attention are the ones that are legitimately consistently using it to share and and, and just see what, what they're doing. Yeah. I think about a friend of mine who like what he does is he'll get a job um, for about three months, saves up his money and then he travels and he goes out and he takes pictures of the places that he's at and what he's doing and stuff like that. And he doesn't stress about social media because he doesn't follow. He doesn't worry about how many people are following him. And that's the thing. It's like the, the stress of social media has to do with the attention seeking that is out there when it comes to social media. And honestly, thinking that your status for like some of these people that have a lot of followers Thinking that your status is up there because you have people that follow you on social media and it's ridiculous. Like, that's not... It's become this new spectrum of, of status 
mm-hmm. for a lot of people and that's stressful. And it's like, no, you're just you're just out there sharing your stuff. Um, Tambo said, I use my social media like I did MySpace. I didn't even bother following a crowd. Yeah. 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 I, so I think the most basic way to say it is if you're looking at social media as a means to an end, you, there's going to be heartache, right? Yeah. Um, and if it's if you need to get an, a, a return on investment out of social media, there's heartache yeah. there. Um, I mean, it's the same thing as going to, you know, Valerie says, all those marketing algorithm hacks and rules are truly cringy to me. I feel so slimy. I just like engaging with people and sharing things that are pretty. Boom. Good That's reason. that right there. That's a great reason. Um, I have a few regular likers on the Rogue community already, and that makes me feel like a rock star already. I love it. And I try to reciprocate back to them in an honest way. And that's yeah. how it works. Yeah. It, it's These platforms are built around engagement, but not engagement in the way that we've made it dirty in recent times. Genuine engagement, like... You know, reciprocal action. That, that's the problem. <laughs> Conversation. Is that a lot of that stuff that you find online, they're trying to sell you into their marketing, right? And so, like, people look at this and they're like, well, I'm going to find this information. And it's like the majority of it is just people trying to sell you their marketing. Like, that's what they're trying to sell you. And it it frustrates me because it is so obvious once you start noticing that everything that revolves around these platforms is kind of dictated by these shoulds should and should nots that are dictated by people who are trying to make money off of people trying to get popular on social media. And it's like, it takes the fun out of it. It takes the fun Mm -hmm. out of it. Surrounded by stars said algorithms will come and go. We will outlast them or as long as we treat ourselves kindly and do things holistically agreed leslie said uh watch this later off to do my side hustle leadership mentoring bye leslie tish said in the olden days of facebook 2010s i found that behind the scenes pics did better than other stuff so that whole show only your art crap went out the window as soon as they said it people want people want to get to know you know what's really frustrating for me when i find something on social media or someone on social media and i see one of their posts and i'm like oh this is interesting right because this is how it works it's one person at a time oh this is this is cool and then you go to their profile because you want to see more about that person like Mm -hmm. who is this person that created this thing Mm -hmm. and you know there's something really powerful about that and it's relating it back to just that human connection versus this whole thing of like this hustle grind push out there thing like i don't it just doesn't work and it's not sustainable. If I tried to run anything that we do, and we do a lot, we do the podcast, uh, social media post, videos, videos on social media, YouTube, uh, website, music blogs, distribution. music distribution, all that stuff. Classes. <laughs> if I was approaching all that stuff in a sales type mindset, including my art, I would not enjoy anything that I do. This would be a job. And to be honest with you, I've worked corporate and at jobs for way too long to turn what I love doing into a job. And that includes posting on social media. Like, Mm -hmm. why am I going to allow myself, why am I going to have a thing that I do that I stress myself out doing? Like, that's not the whole point of of posting the stuff that you post out there like every time you post something you're putting a little piece of you out there Mm -hmm. and you get to you get to share that with other people that might run into it and are interested Troy said ninja sonic internet listen to it i'm gonna um i'm gonna look that up okay thank you Troy. jay windsor said but that dopamine rush when a post randomly blows up it's hard to resist the urge to repeat that. I totally get that. We've had some things on the YouTubes that reached a, f- a greater audience than normal, and it's exciting. 
Um, but I think that I've grown comfortable just riding the wave, you know, because you can't predict when it's going to happen or why. And also with that spike in engagement also comes more conflict sometimes. More people that aren't necessarily, <laughs> they might be jumping on a, on a popularity yeah. thing. So I'm actually quite happy to retreat to the like comfort levels of our baselines on the platforms, um, following a spike. To it's, be to be honest with you, I kind of approach it the same way. Like when I create a, a work of art and I put it out there and it sells right away, mm -hmm. right? It's like, oh, wow, this is cool. And I'm like, that was badass. I don't know when the next time is that I'm going to repeat it. Mm -hmm. And whatever, I'm on to the next thing. And it's the same thing with the videos. Like um, I, I'll give you a good example. The AI video, boom. Yeah. Spiked up there. I took that sucker down because I was like, I don't care. I don't I don't want more subscribers. I don't want more people to uh, put in their their stuff like I just I'm I'm done with that. It was fueling conflict. It was fueling conflict and I was like, I don't want conflict on my channel. And I'm not going to sacrifice the experience on my channel for a video that's going to be popular. Like I could care less. That I, we're going to film, you know, we film videos. Some of them are going to be popular. Some of them are going to be baseline. So what? Mm -hmm. Like, and I think that that's the thing. It's like, yeah, that's cool. But as far as the dopamine rush, I'm like, yeah, cool. On to the next thing. Yeah. On to the next thing. Right? Mallory said, I do both art and photography, and this has been so hard for me to figure out same or separate social pages. I love the whole person idea. Yeah. That's my biggest thing. And look, this is majorly still a work in progress for me. I'll just admit that to you guys. And anybody that's following me on any of the socials knows this. I love the whole person approach. I ghost on social media a lot, but when I am on there, I am posting about what is going on, and oftentimes it has not much to do with my jewelry. Yeah. And a lot of times, I can't even show what I'm working on because it's a commission or a surprise. So, like, I have to be a whole person on social media. I don't care what any of the gurus say. Yeah. That's just how I operate. Yeah, and you got to operate the way that you operate. Shroy said, I'm coming back to social media. I effing hate Facebook because they're evil, but nonetheless, I'm back on it. Shroy, just use Facebook, right? So here's an example of my, and this is an example that nobody will tell you to do. This is how I use Facebook. Everything automatically posts to Facebook from everywhere else. That's it. I barely go on Facebook. And if I do happen to go on Facebook, I have gone on there and basically deleted anything that comes from anyone, blocked people. I will block. I've blocked my own daughter because she was posting like stuff that I didn't want to look at. Like, I don't care. Basically, everything just gets shared there from everywhere else. And I spend five minutes posting across the board and then I'm done. Um, because I don't have time. I have time to go on there and, like, see what the rogues are doing and, like, view something. Mm -hmm. But I don't have time to go down a stream and see a bunch of bullshit. I don't watch the news. I don't, I don't, I don't have time for that in my life. And so... That's where it's like, it might take a few steps to get there, but make it something that you enjoy doing because psychologically, if you are doing this thing that you don't enjoy doing, there, underneath it all, it means that you are willing to compromise who you are for some other kind of need that is like down there, right? Right? If you're posting to social media and you haven't figured out your way of doing it and you are frustrated and you hate it, it the story that that tells yourself is, is detrimental to you. So you want to reframe that and make it a reality where like, this is no big deal. Mm -hmm. Fuck it. I'm going to post. Right. I, I don't have to. I, I'm not sacrificing anything in order to make this happen. In my experience, that's true. And admittedly, um, that is why I ghost on social media, because the part of me that doesn't want to be made to feel like I have to usually wins the argument. Right. If I'm not 100 percent in into it, I just don't. 
and I'm constantly working on undoing all that BS that we all learned <laughs> on how to use social media and getting back to that more organic thing where it is enjoyable because I'm not going to talk myself into doing something that I hate doing. No, I'm no. just not. And there's only a certain amount of time that you could do that. Right. You know, like maybe the motivation of this is getting, but that that's going to get old really quickly and you're just not going to want to do no. it. And the truth is that I love engaging with our people on social media, but it's easy to forget that when you feel all the pressure of all the other grody stuff that seems to come with it, but doesn't have to. Yeah. And I think that's that's the meat and potatoes of it <laughs> for me. Um, uh, TGP said, that's powerful. Put you into social media and not a job. Yeah, exactly. Gobble said, it kills me how genuine you guys are. This whole community of rogues is very genuine. And I, I so many of the rogue fam, ourselves included, feel this pressure, even though we are very authentic people, especially with each other, that can have these conversations. And I think it's it's taking back that permission to do that publicly, to whatever extent you're comfortable with. Yeah. And and that's the thing. It's like, if you're not, if if you are trying to jump on what's popular, right? And you're not doing that from a genuine place, right? You're just doing this because, oh, well, right now posting this is popular or these things are popular. That's synonymous with the the way that a lot of people start their art career is like you get into an area and they're like, well, you know, mountain scenes are popular here. Um, horse ranch, horse art is popular in this area. Uh, seascapes are popular in this coastal area. These are the things that are popular. That stuff is not going to do well. And then a lot of people jump on that and they do that because that's the thing that's popular. And what they don't realize is that, sure, it's popular because there's a lot of it and everybody's doing it and mm -hmm. no one else has a choice to follow or see or look at anything else because that's what everybody's freaking doing. So, of course, it's going to be popular. So it becomes this Ouroboros of bullshit. And so, like, everybody's jumping on this thing, jumping on the algorithm train or doing this or doing that. And it's like, yeah, everybody's doing it. So because everybody's everybody's doing it, oh, we think that that's the way that it's supposed to be done. But in reality, the only way to do it is the way that you do it. It doesn't matter if it's posting to social media or if it is creating an art career. Whatever it is that you're doing, it, it's, it's up to you to decide how it is that you want to do it, not follow some cookie cutter way of doing it that's already being done and everyone else is doing it you're not going to set yourself apart that way no the only way that you set yourself apart is by being you and talking and doing the things that you want to talk and do you know not trying to appease the masses but just being yourself because at the end of the day when when it's not even about posting on social media that's just a window into what what it is that you act like or what it is that you think you're supposed to act like when you are sharing yourself out into the world, when you are sharing who you are, that you're supposed to behave a certain way or act a certain way or this is how it's supposed to be. And really, at the end of the day, it's like you're just supposed to be you. That's it. No questions. No nothing. You are you. And that's what you put out there. Because if not, what are you doing? What are you at the end of the day, you're going to be like lying in your deathbed and be like, I just wish that I was more myself. Like, just be yourself now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry, that was a rant. And those big, fancy, <clears throat> polished accounts that have like tons of subscribers and they do everything right, right? They, they, they hit all the points. They give you like a personal tidbit followed by like a prompt, followed by like a question, followed by like a whatever. Those people have teams of people posting on their social media feeds. Yeah. Like, none of us in real life who don't have teams of people are expected to, like, legitimately do this. Yeah. But all, you can... All of them. You can cycle through a variety of things that is you, that is genuine to you, that is really who you are. Or you can not. I think about a friend of ours who is in his 80s who uh, takes pictures of the sun just about every day. That's just what he likes doing. Sunrise, sunset, over some water. That's his happy place. He posts it with a little hello and some cheerfulness 
on the socials every morning and gives zero fucks. Henry Henry is the reason yeah. that I even look at stuff on Facebook. Same. Because that's the only <laughs> platform he uses. Yeah. So like, and I want to see his little happiness quote with his picture of, he contacted me once to do a painting. I did a painting of him because he happened to catch the sun in the shape of, of a heart. Yeah. And it just meant so much to him. And so like, sometimes, that's the thing. It's like, that's, that's out there. Yeah. You know, that's all. And that's amazing. And that's being shared on social media. Yeah. Like, and he's those, not worried about it. Those are the beautiful things that are out there. He's not worried about getting a bunch of likes or fans or any of that shit. He's just being himself and sharing what he loves. And I'm like, I love that. That's, that's real. That's, that's powerful. Um, not this these polished accounts or the the you know person posing next to their art in their immaculate studio and I'm like bull crap your studio does not look like that and if it does then you know it's fake. <laughs> Tish said it's always okay to walk away from social media and not do anything with it for a while. Your mental health is more important than some thumbs up and likes on social exactly. media. Exactly. And that's that's the whole point of like my entire way of approaching social media is like take the stress out of it. Do not make it into something that is going to impact you unhealthily mentally. Like why it's social media like come on really like it's not that it's not that it's not this like life-changing thing it's just a way to like virtually put yourself out there and and show your sh shit off diane wants to know do you use an app to schedule all your posts so you don't have to waste time on each platform no i copy and paste everything i just copy i basically post on instagram and then I copy my text, and then I go to the other ones, upload the same picture, paste, upload picture, paste, upload picture. No, I tried the scheduling platforms, and I've, honestly, it's too much work for me. Yeah, I was going to answer the same. I tried it out, too, and it actually felt more like a burden, and it felt less, um, it felt less organic and more like going the direction I didn't want to go. Yeah. So for me, no, I, it has to be more spontaneous, if I, I guess. If I find one, and, I, and, and that's what I'm looking for, I'm sure there's one out there where I could just post a thing and then it automatically posts it across the board. Yeah, that would be then cool. I, then that'd be cool. Then I wouldn't have to like copy and paste but yes, and all that. Scheduling posts uh, for me, I just can't. I can't do it. Yeah. Um, Valerie said, being genuine is the only way to go. Yeah. Indeed. It's the sustainable way to go for sure. Yeah. TGP said, if you can't do what you yearn to do, how can you succeed? It's just another soul sucking job. Very strongly resonates with me. Yeah. Ginny said, here's an awful social story. I had a Facebook page. I also had a stalker mm. who figured out how to find me by clues other people posted. Now only family plus three others. You guys are one of the others. It took me forever to put Chicago on my Instagram. No personal photos, at least for now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's understandable. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm always like, share what you are comfortable with. Nothing more, nothing less, depending on your situation. Yep. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't have to be pictures of you. It could be nope. pictures of your hands with your art. It could be pictures of something that you love or something that you like. Yeah, let's talk about this because personal doesn't have to mean what a lot of people think it means and sharing doesn't have to mean oversharing. You don't have to share so many people and really not you guys, um, but a lot of people think when we say like be a whole person, be real, be Tell yourself. Tell your story. They think that we mean like divulge everything about yourself on the internet, <clears throat> which is not. They at get all. really mad too, you guys. They'll they'll leave comments on the on the videos when I'm like, just share your story, share who you are, you know. And they don't understand that like a story is like, why did you create that work of art? What does it mean to you? Mm -hmm. Why did you gravitate towards those colors? There's a story there. It's it's fascinating. Those are the things that are fascinating to other humans. Why did you decide to eat that meal? Why do you like this kind of food instead of that kind of food? Like all these cool, really cool things. But immediately when I'm like, tell your story, just be yourself. They're like, I'm not going to divulge, you know, the fact that I went through blah, 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 or I had this and this and that. And it's blah, like, you, you don't know. have to. It's like, you don't have to. Unless That's... you want to, because it's cathartic 
for you. Let, let's use Klee as an example, right? You guys know a fair bit about me because I have told you stories and anecdotes and things about who I am and what I do. But you haven't heard grisly details of my... <laughs> of my struggles and my upbringing or um, family drama or personal stuff that's not relevant to what we're talking about. Now, it's not to say that I wouldn't share that with you guys, but this is try I'm trying to make the distinction here, right? It doesn't mean the dirty laundry. It doesn't have to mean that. It can mean that if you need to get it out, you know, social media is not really like a safe place. I mean, I think, I think about it <laughs> but, and I'm like, I'm, I'm like, okay, so you go to a party, right? Think of social media like a party. Yeah. You go to a party, you walk up to somebody, right? And this is your post. This is, there's, there's a crowd of, there's maybe about five or six people just standing there and you just walk up and then you just blah, your dirty laundry. I grew up and this is what, and this, this is what happened to me and it was horrible and blah, blah, blah. And you just sit there and you talk about everything that's gone wrong in your life and, you know, all these deep, dark secrets about you. That's going to get very uncomfortable, very right? Quick. It's not only uncomfortable for you, but it's uncomfortable for them because it's like, what the hell are you supposed to say to that? Too much, you know? too soon. Yeah. So <laughs> like, that's the thing. It's like, because of the way that people perceive it, they think that it, that it's either all or nothing. And that's just not the way that relationships work. And that's the problem with a lot of the guru stuff and the stuff that really makes all this frustrating is that you don't under, it's not about getting the attention. It's about just putting stuff out there to build that relationship, right? Preferably not with a stalker, right? right. So not stalkery type of stuff. But, you know, not anything that's too personal, right? I'm, I'm very keen about that. Like, I make sure that in our videos, you don't see our, our address. You don't see these things, right? We've given our address out to a few of the rogues who have come to visit us. But, like, I'm not going to share that stuff um, on social media. I'm not going to be like, hey, guys, go here. Mm -hmm. I mean, our local newspaper is going to do that for us. They posted our, our address on the, on front, the page. front page of the oh, paper. Yeah. I got a call from my mom like, that's really nice, but what's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> no, whatever your safety and comfort levels are. Um, Most importantly, stay safe. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it's on social media or in person or whatever like that. You always, you just want to, you want to make sure that it's not too much too much information of like exactly where you are and what you're doing. That's why even when we go on road trips, we'll share with the rogues like where we're at. We might do a live stream, but I won't post until after the fact where we were, where we were. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, those are just the things that, that we think about. Yeah. Those are things to definitely be aware of when you're engaging on the internet at all. And I, and I think that that works for me because I also, my posting schedule is kind of hindsight, you know? Here's what I did. Here's what I did, you know, and I'll go through and I'll, while it's going on, I'll take a picture. I'm like, this is cool or like, this is awesome. It's a picture for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's what gets shared because what I share is stuff for me, for me to remember. Because it's either you take a picture and it's like in the olden days where you put stuff in a photo album and then you end up sticking the photo album in a box and then it goes in a closet and maybe you pull it out every two or three years to show somebody a picture of something or it goes out there and it's it's out there where I could easily get to it on my phone instead of saving it and taking up memory on my phone. That's really the way the way I use it. I'm like, great. Now there's a service out there that holds my picture for me yeah, and shares it and I don't have to do shit. Um, I've been doing a little thinking about the, we, this is a common thing that we hear. Like, uh, I don't want to share my work because I'm afraid people are going to steal it. I don't want to share my process because I'm afraid people are going to steal my secrets. <laughs> um, and I've been thinking a lot about that because like, uh, I haven't done a hell of ton of process videos, but I have done some. And it's always a time lapse, right? Like somebody's not going to sit down and watch my 60 second reel and figure out exactly how I made something. Yeah. And if they do, more power to them because I'm not the first one who made a moon out of brass. You know what I mean? 
Um, and also, I think I'm working the opposite where I'm actually putting my work online so that there is a record of the fact that I created it. Like, especially with songs. Right now, I have like half a dozen songs I'm working on. And until they're online, I don't have layman's copyright. Yeah. Um, but the minute they go online, there's a timestamp that I created this thing. So I'm kind of using it in the opposite of like the, the poor man's copyright, as they call it. Um, so I don't worry so much about art theft. Either. I mean, I don't worry about any of that stuff. Um, it's just too much, too much to think about, too much pressure. So I just share I just share my stuff. Now, I know some of you guys listening out there have <laughs> horrible stories about art theft, and it's it's real. And so you have to do what you need to do to protect yourself there. Watermarks, low res, whatever you need to do. But don't let it be an excuse to stop you from sharing because there's workarounds for those things. Uh, Shroy said, I'm thinking about doing a 30-day journaling challenge for artists. Shroy, yeah. that's awesome. That is I awesome. I love that. I love that a lot. Same with... Wait, no. uh, we're talking about birth names in the chat box. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Well, let's... Well, um, so that was that was really interesting. And I know that I went into several rants uh, going into that. Hold on. Let me do that because... Okay. Yeah, because <laughs> Sarah's like, I know my birth name is Vicky, yet I want to be called Sarah. Timothy, please. Sarah, the thing is, you're going to have to change your name on here because people don't know that people when don't you show know up that. as Vicky in the ticker tape. You know what I mean? So like and that's cool that you said that, but then you can't really count on people remembering that. If so. you want to be called Sarah, use the Sarah Neville sign in. Yeah. <laughs> I know sometimes you forget, but it's just easier for it, people. It's that easier way. for other people, you know. It's just just make it easy on them. Okay, and back to and, and back. Okay. Gobbles Gossip said, I thought yesterday, how could anyone ever actually copy my style if they have no clue exactly how a pencil or brush feels in my hand? Exactly. That's a really awesome way to say that. And that's, that's one of I the, love that. And that's one of the things that I think about. I'm like, you know, I, and that's coming from a place where I've had people try and replicate what I have done right at the market. You know, I had my trees and I've had people try and replicate that stuff. And it's like they created their version of it. And cool. You know, other <laughs> other artists around me were really upset for me. And I was like, whatever. Like, what I create is what I create. And for anybody out there that is trying to make a living from someone else's creations, that's too much work. That is not sustainable. And it sucks. To be in that person's place. Yeah, and they'll burn out and move on. And there are people out there that just get inspired by stuff. And they're like, oh, let me create. And that's fine because that's just a, a part of their journey. Um, so it's not, it's just not something that I worry about. I do, when I post on social media or anywhere online, 72 DPI and the largest size of a uh, side of my image is maybe 1200 pixels. So it's too low res to reproduce. Exactly. Diane says, I don't worry about copycats. I never make the same thing twice. So good luck keeping up yeah, with me. Yeah, exactly. Tish said, good artist borrow, great artist steal. Exactly. Absolutely. Hold, um, on, hold on. There's a motorcycle. <laughs> All right. We're, we're getting at the end here. Okay, go ahead and read Tish's again, cause, or Diane's and Tish's. Okay, uh, Diane said, I don't worry about copycats. I never make the exact same thing twice, so good luck keeping up with me. Yeah, that's great. And Tish said, good artists borrow, great artists steal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Tish also said, my art changes with my mood, and I'm moody. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Sarah said, I can't even copy myself. If I try, it turns out completely different because I'm not the same person every day. I feel you, Sarah. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, I, th you know, it is important to protect yourself and your work online, but I think a lot of people just kind of use that as an excuse not to share stuff. And that's and the thing. There's a lot of excuses on not sharing stuff. And, you know, one of the biggest ones is it just, it's emotionally taxing. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm like, you know, you might want to take a close look at what your motivation is underneath, because if something is emotionally taxing, that means that it's attached to something that is causing it to be stressful. And 
you, when I think of social media, I'm like, guys, it's not that serious. This was a great conversation. This was a hard conversation. It was a hard conversation. For me, social for media is always yeah. a hard conversation, but I really appreciate the insights and questions and stories from the Rogue fam. It, because dudes, we're all in this together. And creative people who are very tuned into their emotions often are the ones I feel that struggle the most with this because it can feel so taxing. Well, we're so creative. So a lot of times it's like, oh, I'm excited to share this or I'm excited to share that. And then if all of a sudden the question comes in, it's like, well, is that going to get you enough? Like, is the algorithm going to like it? Are people going to like it? Um, you know, should you post that right now? What time of day should you post? When it blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. That's the thing is that creative people can be the biggest powerhouses on social media, but we're also the ones who fret the most. <laughs> we are. <laughs> We just are. So try. I guess the the goal is to try to lean into your um, I don't give a rip powerhouse self. Yeah. Um, rather than the fret. Because <laughs> really, that's that's where we create good art. And when I look at social media, that's kind of how I look at it. It's like this is a this is a blank canvas where I get to show off my life, right? Who I am. And be able to look back at this creation, social media itself, being this this giant, um, let's say, uh, work in progress, right? That is capturing these moments in my life. And I look at that and I think to myself, like, wow, look at this creation. Look at this thing that I'm creating, right? And I don't get attached to it either because I'm like, well, they could go the way of the dodo or whatever. But really, at the end of the day, this is for me. This is for me. This is this is why I'm creating it. And at the end, if somebody sees it and they like the work, right? Not just the individual artwork, but they like the work of life that I've created. Um, cool. You know, great. Bonus. But I like it. Yeah. So that's really ultimately what matters. And yeah, I think that that is good enough. We should cut it off here. All right. And thank you guys so much for being here, the Rogues, and your input and your insight. You guys are freaking awesome. And for everybody that is listening to this at home, thank you so much for being here and uh, following us. And if you don't follow us, you know, click on that subscribe button wherever it may be uh, so that you could keep up with us. We do our podcast weekly and would love uh, to have you listen. All Should right. you choose to? Yeah, I'm. I'm still. <laughs> we're, we just got back from a hiatus, so I don't know how to end these things quite yet. But I'm going to end it by saying, "Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.